uh, the Hadamard code has um, amazing minimum distance, but terrible, right? In fact, it's also known to be optimal in a sense that um, for a binary code, if your minimum distance is like n, not just n times a half, but n times a half plus epsilon, then uh, the code can only contain constantly many code words, where the constant depends on epsilon. Okay, so that's really like the ultimate terrible rate, to only have constantly many code words in your uh, growing uh, block length space. Okay, so, okay. Now we're gonna see a code that has a great rate and great distance, but it's still gonna have a bad thing. And that bad thing is gonna be the alphabet size. The alphabet size is gonna be really huge. Nevertheless, uh, these codes, which are called the Reed Solomon codes, are really like the ultimate like great codes in practice. So these uh, were developed in the 50s by Irving Reed and Gus Solomon, or maybe it's Gus Reed and Irving Solomon, I forget. Um, and they're really used a lot in practice. So like they're used for storing information on DVDs, they're used in like the QR codes, those like squares with the weird like blocks that you point your phone at. Uh, these are all based on Reed Solomon codes. And these Reed Solomon codes are basically like a generalization of Hadamard code, but to higher degree polynomials. So in fact, to um, univariate higher degree polynomials. So this is like uh, R variate degree one polynomials. Reed Solomon codes are going to be about univariate uh, higher degree polynomials. Okay, so let's define Reed Solomon codes. And they're a family of codes. So one nice thing is that uh, you can have any choice of k as a function of n. Uh, the downside, as I said, is that they're going to require that the alphabet size is bigger than n, which is maybe a little bit weird. Uh, for example, if q is 256, like maybe you're sending bytes, then it means your uh, transmitted words can have at most 256 bytes in them, which is a little bit odd, but okay. Uh, and finally, they're also defined by uh, a subset, s, of uh, the field of size n. Okay, so in order for this to be possible, this is why q needs to be at least n. Uh, the way Reed Solomon codes are going to work is this. The encoding map, which maps uh, vectors of length k to vectors of length n, uh, is going to work like this. You're given a message. And uh, this is k symbols long, where these symbols are field elements. OK, and uh, we're going to think of the message as defining a polynomial, namely the univariate polynomial whose coefficients are these symbols. OK, so let me put uh, over here where P of M is the polynomial in X, the univariate polynomial that looks like M0 plus M1X to the 1 plus dot 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 plus MK minus 1, X to the K minus 1. And the encoding is just going to do the same thing that the Hadamard code did, namely it's going to output the truth table of this polynomial, if you will. Or at least it's going to output all the evaluations on the set S. So it's going to output um, this polynomial applied to all um, field elements in the set S in some fixed order. Okay, so it's just uh, take your message, interpret its symbols as the coefficients of a polynomial, and then output that polynomial's value on a bunch of points. And like usually uh, Q equals N. And S is just everything. So here's some remarks. Usually Q is just N, and S is just uh, everything. The whole field of size Q. OK, and then really it's just like M maps to the whole truth table, if you will, of PM. Uh, that's one remark. 
Another remark is that this is a linear code. Seems funny because it's, I don't know, maybe you're like, oh, it's not a linear polynomial, but can somebody say why this is a linear code? Yep. Ah, that's a good point. Yeah. You can write down the generator um, matrix. You can write down a generator matrix, which is just like a matrix multiply that you can do to uh, generate the code. I'll remind you of what that is in a second, but um, another way to see it. is that um, to be a linear code, uh, the sum of two code words should also be a code word. And that's true because like the vector sum of two truth tables is also the truth table of the sum of, of the polynomials. Okay, so actually, if you have two messages, m and m prime, um, then pm plus pm prime as polynomials is the same as uh, PM plus PM prime. Okay, so the truth tables uh, add when you add to polynomials or add two sets of coefficients. But uh, this is another way to see it. This uh, columns are generator matrix. Sorry, the generator matrix is a Vandermond matrix, which means that the columns of it look like um, like a to the power of zero, a to the power of one, up through a to the power of k minus one for all A in your set S. OK, so uh, you know about the message length K. We know about the block length N. Actually, so far, there's no real relationship between them, except that N should be at least uh, K. We know about uh, the alphabet size. Sadly, it's quite large. It's typically n. What about the minimum distance? Uh, the fact is that the minimum distance for a read solving code is real great. So the distance of the read solving code is at least n minus k minus 1. In fact, uh, we won't prove this, but it's exactly equal to this. OK, and that's uh, really great, because I mean, you know, if k is n over 2, let's say, so you're mapping uh, vectors of length n over 2 to vectors of length n, that's excellent rate. And then the minimum distance will also be like n over 2, which is like an excellent minimum distance. Um, you can correct like uh, n over 4 errors, for example. The only downside is, you know, n has to be smaller than the alphabet size. So the alphabet size has to be really big. So let's see the proof of this. Well, uh, since it's a linear code, we know that the distance d is the minimum Hamming weight of a non-zero code word. Um, OK, well, first of all, how could you have a non-zero code word? It means the truth table of your polynomial is all zeros. Uh, so that's going to mean, actually, that the coefficients are all zeros. Um, but in particular, uh, this means that, um, OK, so you're looking at the Hamming weight of a non-zero code word. That means you're looking at all the places. You're counting the number of places where the polynomial, p sub m, is non-zero. So that's n minus the number of places where the polynomial is zero. OK, so this is n minus the maximum number of zeros of a non-zero code word. OK, but um, these code words are like the, the truth tables of a polynomial of degree k minus 1. 
So by this you know, important degree mantra we saw last time that says if you have a non-zero polynomial of degree at most k minus 1, it has at most k minus 1 zeros. This quantity, this maximum number of zeros, is at most k minus 1. It's a degree mantra. OK, and that's the end of the proof that the distance is at least n minus k minus 1. So in summary, Solomon code is an n k n minus k plus one q code. Uh, and actually, this rate distance trade-off. is the optimal possible trade-off, assuming q is a, at least n. Okay, so if you're willing to have like a really big alphabet size, then uh, this is the largest, I mean, this is the best possible trade-off you can get between rate and minimum distance. And that's a consequence of what's called the singleton bound. Which is a very trivial bound that uh, says exactly this. For any NKD code, not even necessarily linear, uh, K has to be at most N minus D plus 1. K, which is equivalent to saying that D uh, is at most N minus K plus 1. OK, and the proof of this is um, super simple. But uh, maybe I'll skip it for time. But it's literally like a one-line proof that uses the pigeonhole principle. OK, so as I said, uh, you know, it's a great code if you're willing to have large alphabet size. For example, you can take k to be n over 2. And then your rate is a half. And um, the minimum distance is also like a half times n, which is terrific. <laughs>